All right, we're live on the SSE show, sports and social entertainment show, and tonight we're going to do a little bit of entertainment. Noel Bean is an up-and-coming superstar, folks. I'm telling you, I've heard her music. Now, I've, okay. Now, I've been to concerts with uh, Michael Jackson, and I saw him when he was a kid, and I said, that kid's going to be a superstar, and I was right. I've seen Amy Grant. I knew she was going to be a superstar, and I've seen the Rolling Stones when they were kind of old, and I thought they were outdated. But this girl <laughs> is hip and great. Noelle Bean, thank you for being part of the show. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited. My question to you is um, – how did you get involved in music? And we'll let, everybody's going to hear your music when you get going, but tell us how you get involved and what, what inspired you to be a musician. I, it's a weird story because um, I grew up singing in church, so I was obligated to be in choir whether I liked it or not. And so I kind of always had music running through me, and I just didn't know it up until a couple of years ago. And um, I started out with just – I learned how to play guitar. I had one given to me. Um, by a lady who came up to my school whenever I was a senior in high school and she said do you guys know anybody who is looking to you know get a free guitar I have one that I'm just wanting to get rid of it's taking up space in my house and I said me and so she um she gave me the guitar and of course I let it sit and collect dust for about two years in the corner of my room and then finally picked it up one day and googled different tabs and chords for songs that I love and um, finally got strumming down and then finger picking and all of that good stuff well enough for me to put a song together myself. And um, I posted my first song on YouTube via video and everybody was so sweet. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to start posting a couple more of these. And so ever since up in about two years ago, it'll be two years in March of next year, um, I've been doing this whole internet thing just getting my music out to the world but that's just the tip of the iceberg on how I got started so there's my intro that's exciting because uh, a lot of people want to follow their passion but they got to be great at what they do and you're obviously great at what you do when did you know all of a sudden you're like you know what I can actually do this uh, when did it click when did you feel that um I was pursued I actually how it kind of started into it. I posted a couple of my videos on YouTube and um, a friend messaged me on Facebook and she said, hey Noelle, you're pretty good, why don't you enter this contest that a local college up in New York City is um, having for singer-songwriters and um, I was like, well okay, uh, you know, what do I have to lose? And I posted one of my videos and was contacted by a major label up in New York and they flew me around to different producers to try and kind of, I guess, craft or polish me mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you know, get me going and stuff. And, um, you know, I was offered a deal, but I had, n I d had no idea about contracts and, you know, how to get into this music business. And I was nervous to sign my life away. And so um, I held off on it and was introduced my amazing manager Adam Mel and Scott McCracken and um, they have helped shape me over the past year into the artist that I am right now and it's it's been incredible it's been crazy okay you bring up Scott McCracken right now and Adam as well they've uh, they obviously see something in you they take a risk and in, in, in that they're investing in you and that's impressive Scott I'm gonna throw this at you if you want to answer this question um, what do you see in her and, and why are you excited about what she does I'm excited about the fact that she is um, she's authentic, and she's she's a, she really connects with people. Um, what's what's inspiring about her, and you know, she's 21 years old. I'm 49 years old. There's I don't know how many generation gaps between the two of us, and yet I watch the things that she does, and it inspires me. Her beauty blogs inspire me. Her lyrical work inspires me. She's she's incredible. She's I, I I as a manager I probably sold I don't know forty fifty million records in the artists I've managed and she is maybe the most impressive artist I've ever seen. Uh -oh. Wow wow yeah. wow! How does that make you feel, Bean? <laughs> um. Well, coming from Scott, I'm just like whenever he first told me those sweet mushy gushy things, I was like, this is not real life. I was like, please pinch me because he's like <laughs> amazing in my eyes. So I'm I'm thrilled to have. All of that said to me. 
When you're talking about the people you've sold before, I'm going to go back to you for a second. We'll go back to Bean, of course. Uh, you said 40, 50 million R's. Tell me some, some of the stars that you've dealt with or some of the people you've respected, and uh, why do you see something in her? Well, um, uh, I managed uh, the Fujis and the different variations of the Fujis. I managed Lauren Hill, Wyclef, 98 Degrees, Joan Osborne. Okay. A bunch of artists like that. Um, in fact, I actually decided in 2004 that I was done after about 16 or 17 years. And it took an artist like this to make me excited and want to come back. And uh, what, what I what I admire most about Bean is her ability to make her herself vulnerable, to talk about personal experiences in her life that create a vulnerability in her and bring her fans in make her fans feel a closeness that's real. It's a, it's a real closeness. She communicates with each one of her fans as if they were her friends. And, and she, she does it with such grace and such charm and beauty. Uh, I, 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 I think right now I'm, I'm touched already, so I think I need to hear something. Uh, I need to hear some music. And then we'll go back to some questions. This is uh, everybody's pumping you up. And I've seen some of your videos, so for the audience out there, how about some uh, live live music? And what do you want to play first? I think it would be most appropriate to play the one song that got me kind of noticed by everybody on my YouTube channel, and it's a song called Like to Love You. And um, I guess I should get going on it, huh? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. All right. Let me turn my studio on. Here we go. I wrote this one about a guy who, um, who I really, really liked a lot, and it happens to be the same guy that I wrote my new single, Cops and Robbers, about. So he got quite a few songs written about him. And where is he now? I have no idea. What an idiot. What a <laughs> moron. <laughs> but was... you know what? He's, uh, you know what? Maybe he'll buy your music now. It's, it's so true whenever they say, break a girl's heart and she'll write a song about it, because I've written <laughs> these songs. <laughs> So here we go. Okay.
breakfast in bed. Chase me in my PJs, kiss me on my head. Uh oh, uh oh, I'd really like to love you. Now I'm sort of kind of blushing, weak in the knees, butterflies. When I see you, long goodbyes when you leave. Uh oh. Awesome. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, folks. Everybody watching right now, this is not studio enhanced. This is not edited. This is not uh, lip sync. This is live on Google Plus, and it sounded unbelievable. Way to go. Thank you. You are so sweet. That's phenomenal. That is unbelievable. And that guy's an idiot. I can't wait to send him the link. Give me his email address. Oh, my gosh. That was greatness. Wow. wow! It was it was definitely um, the first song that got me noticed. So I, it's kind of like anytime anybody's like play a song, I have to play that one because it's like without that song, I don't know if I would be here right now. You know? Can we find I guess that in a on way you YouTube can't be bitter at him? You've got to love this guy now because he's helped you. Yeah, most definitely. Everything happens for a reason, right? If anybody has a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get to you. Um, we'll keep asking questions for now. Um, and then we'll play another song, and then a few more questions, and then we'll let you off. You know, we don't want to keep you all night. Um, I think what's interesting is someone like you in the old days uh, could not have been found. Uh, you'd have to go to the big uh, record labels to be found. Nowadays, if you have talent, uh, they have American Idol, they have uh, YouTube, they've got Twitter, they've got Google Plus now. Uh, you can be found if you're talented. How exciting is that for you to be able to show your talent like this? Um, I'll tell you what, without social media and my Twitter and Facebook and um, all of the incredible people who I've met through those different social media networks, I would not be here right now. Number one, um, my first exposure was through a YouTube video and being able to use that as an outlet to get my sound out and my passion for what I do has been incredibly helpful and beneficial on my part. So um, I, I wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be doing this chat right now. With I all these know. Wonderful. It's awesome. I love yeah. it. Okay. And then uh, uh, we go from there to, unfortunately, uh, you wanted to tell this story. It's sad. Tell us about your dad and how that inspired you as well. Uh, it seems like that was part of your inspiration in music. Well, um, my sister came up to me one day and she said, Noelle, I was writing a song for one of my best friends and she said, Noelle, I don't understand it. We're sisters and you haven't written a song for me yet, but you write a song about these guys who break your hearts and are terrible to you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll give it to you. I need to write your song. So I was listening to, um, there's a band named Copeland, their version of You Are My Sunshine. And I was sitting there and... Um, I, the word clicked, it's sunshine, which is my little sister's nickname from my dad, um, is, you know, something that's very important to her in the sense that our father passed away on 4th of July whenever I was 12 from a drug overdose, and um, she was a daddy's girl for sure, and being able to integrate that nickname into a song written about our dad and tribute to him is, is um, something that touched you know, the family, and I think in a way kind of healed the whole process of losing somebody that close to you. And um, so I wrote this song in memory of him, and whenever I was writing it, I didn't realize the um, feedback that I would get, and I didn't realize that in being, being so vulnerable that the world was going to be able to relate so well, and I've gotten amazing stories and people opening up to me, this stranger that they'd never met before, just because of that one song. So this song has a really special place in my heart. So Let's I'm excited play to play it for you guys if, I'm, okay. if I can. Let's play that one, sure. All right. I'm so excited that I got invited on this. Hello to everybody else in the world, P.S. <laughs> This is sunshine. Seven years since you've been. 
forceful little voices saying what's done is done midnight chimes and i fight back the tears of a bitter goodbye i know things went wrong one final choice let me down a road i don't belong darling no someday somehow we'll meet again and until then here's a song about your mind The day was muted, just a flash before my eyes Heard the news, numb and confused As I watched my mother cry And the stars were shy As I looked up from that wooden swing Watching fireworks and wondering If you were watching me, oh I know things went wrong One final choice led me down a road Nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank awesome. you. And you're doing that, folks. She's doing that with nobody else but by herself. Normally you've got a whole band behind you. How many people are in your band? There are five of us. And, and so, so it'll be it'll it'll by yourself, and it sounds incredible. How do you do that? It's. Uh, I guess it's from my roots, playing guitar and then a little bit of piano when I was a kid. So... Um, but yeah, there's there's five of us. My guitar player, his name's Neil. Um, my bass player, Anthony. Billy is my drummer, and then my keys player is Kim, and she's the funniest person I know. She's super sweet. So, awesome. and then me. I think you're pretty important. All right, anybody got a question? Please raise your hand. Anybody ready? Mark, what about you? Nope. Diana, you got a question? I sometimes got to throw people to questions. <laughs> yeah, I got a question. There you go. Christine. Oh. Yes. How, like, when you come up with your music, how long does it take to, like, come up with it? Um, as far as songwriting goes, it's totally random. Like, sometimes I'll finish a song in maybe 30 minutes, like, if I'm having super, you know, inspiration. But um, as far as, like, if, if it was a regular thing, it's, like, it's 
completely random. I, I remember one time I was writing a verse while I was driving in the car, and I had my voice recorder going while I was driving because I was like, oh, i got to get this down. This is golden. And then uh, I finished the chorus like two weeks later while I was sitting in bed one night, and I was like, okay, this is the other half. Yes, I'm piecing it together. It's perfect. And... Um, and you know, other times I'll wake up at like three a.m. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a, mm -hmm. I have a song idea, and and you know, it's it's random and it's it it happens daily. I write a song every day, so it's cool. It's my favorite part of the whole music process is writing. So it's my very favorite thing. That's, That's awesome. Cool. That's exciting. All right, guys. Uh, we don't want to take too much of her time. She's got about uh, four more minutes before we go off the air. I know you all wanted to promote one last thing. You were on iTunes. That's a pretty impressive deal. Uh, you were in USA Today, uh, and you've been all other places. Uh, tell us, uh, I guess maybe this question is more for Scott. How have you all gotten her out to the public so quickly? Tell us some of the promotional stuff you're doing. Well, we're partnering with a company named Aku, and Aku has... Uh, in all the well, in about 160 malls, they have the screens that you see in the food court. Okay. And uh, they have stepped up in a huge way uh, to support Bean and her in her launch. They are running her video, Cops and Robbers, which is uh, just uh, actually just loaded onto YouTube yesterday, and then less than 24 hours, we're over 2,000 views already. Um, they're they're showing the video once an hour. Um, which for them is about 10 times a day with two promotional spots in between and a text to win campaign for people that text Bean to the number which I don't know off the top of my head but three, three, one, two, three. yeah I love that awesome everybody text that and they're giving away uh, an iPod Nano a day away for 30 days that's awesome it is and awesome and Bean, uh, is, uh, I bet you yesterday uh, you went to the food courts at the mall a lot. You know, I haven't I've on. seen the Aku screens, but that was before I even knew who they were. And then, you know, we flew to Chicago and met with everybody at Aku, and I was like, dang it, man, I need to go more because it's so cool what they have going on in, in the world of Aku. That's so exciting. Well, congratulations on your success. Um, do you have time for one more, your last song, the famous one that you've played? <laughs> Play it everywhere. Do. All right, folks. Um, this is the last one. one. We'll close with this one. And uh, by the way, you're, uh, uh, we usually screen our guests. Uh, we're probably going to have um, Oscar award winners and all these Grammy award winners. But we'll scratch them any time you want to come on. Okay? Because you're always oh, welcome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, and this last one is um, called Cops and Robbers, and check out beanmusic.com, by the way, and um, if you like the music, you can buy Cops and Robbers there and on iTunes, so I hope you enjoy it, and thank you so much for having me, Chris. Absolutely, anytime. All right, folks, Citrus. let's listen to this rock star. Here we go. Stick them up, you love, or your life. A sweet kiss from poison lips, wanted to end all alive. Seems so clear, now a mystery. Knew it from the start. Revenge is sweet and worth the pain, and I'm aiming for your heart. Oh, oh, oh.
of that. Awesome. And we were trying to bang bang with you as you did it. I, I love it. You guys are incredible. Uh, can I give a so shout much. out really quick to the girl who just logged on? Yes. Yes. Emily Menendez in the green shirt. She's an amazing beanie fan, and I Emily, love you. I'm so glad you got to come in. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Can you hear Emily? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bean is in the house tonight. <laughs> you came in just for the very end, so you got a little snippet of cops and robbers. But uh, I was confused with the time. <laughs> No worries. But Chris, thank you so much for Absolutely. having me. Anytime. You guys are incredible, and um, I can't wait to see you again soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks, everybody, everybody for being part of the, part show. Of the show. All right. Bye, Good guys. Night. Thanks, Thanks for joining. For joining.